Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to share with you a brand new product out of the UK. It's made by a fellow named uh, Guyan Reese Davies. I hate to say it, but this is a game changer. It, it really is something brilliant that he's come up with, and I want to show you how it works here on the module. And I'll give you some tips on how it can be used in uh, installations on permanent layouts as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box right here. And when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. Okay, so what is the uh, ProTrack rail liner and how, how does it work? Well, basically, uh, on model railroads like modular layouts here, we often want to join two uh, sections of track together at a gap between the modules. And the real challenge is to make sure that these are aligned properly, and every time you join them together, they're going to be in the same proper alignment. So what this device does here, and, and as you can see, it looks like a little section of rail. Uh, it's actually a piece of PC board with uh, a nickel uh, uh, circuit trace on it, and then uh, overlaying with gold in order to increase uh, solderability and reduce uh, uh, oxidation of the nickel. So, and if you take a look at it right here, you can see these serrations or tooth sections, whatever you want to call them that made up perfectly. And what that means is, when you put these in place under your rails, any time that you join these together, they're going to guarantee that the rails come into perfect alignment. And that's going to give you a, a you know absolute perfect alignment each time. And it's going to help protect your rails uh, from actually getting broken and uh, knocked loose from the spikes or the chairs, whatever, that hold them in place uh, on the, uh, on the, on the uh, track itself. Now this particular uh, one that I'm holding here works with uh, Pico HO00 scale uh, uh, UK type track. I also have a set and you know these are brand new, literally he just uh, finished producing these so uh, they're so brand new. And this particular one is designed to be used with Pico uh, Code 83 North American track. So I'll be able to use this here on the Piedmont Southern for another job that I'll show you. So basically then, what these allow you to do is uh, made up your two tracks like these here and here and here and here uh, so that I'll, you'll always be in perfect alignment. And another thing that you can use these for and that I'm going to do uh, another video on is uh, mating up your track when you have a lift out section. Because I have two places on my model railroad where uh, the, uh, the layout is in front of my electrical breaker box or panel box. And I need to, and I have to have uh, uh, lift outs there in order to gain access to the panel box itself anytime an electrician might need to work on it. So basically what I can do is use these uh, to guarantee that when I do uh, uh, have to remove and then replace that lift out section, the tracks are going to be in perfect alignment with one another. And also because they are going to be soldered to these metal strips, they're going to be protected from getting knocked loose. And that has already happened to me on at least one occasion, and I had to replace a section of rail there. So I can't wait to give these a try, you know, because that hopefully that's going to so solve that problem for me. Okay, what I want to do now, though, is show you exactly how these work by taking out a section of, of, of the um, ties here and replacing it with these uh, rail aligners. Now, normally, you would want to put these uh, in place before you lay your track. Unfortunately here, you know, I laid this months ago before these were even uh, in production. So I can't do that. So what I'm going to have to do is remove these sections of uh, ties from below the rails and insert these in place. And 
get them all ready to go, and then we can uh, give it a test. So what I want to do right now is show you how I'm going to go about doing that. Because I've already got the, uh, you know, the track laid, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but I think it's going to be easy enough to do that it's not going to be a big issue. Now, another thing that I want to point out that he sent me are, are these ProTrek power indicators. Okay, so you can see these are basically uh, sections of ties, individuals, and they have a pair of red-green LEDs here and a dropping resistor here. And what you can do is, I'll show you one and how it works, you can lay these on your track, and if there's power on the rails, they'll light up. Now in this case, because it's uh, DCC power, both the red and the green are lighting up simultaneously, and, uh, uh, and therefore you get sort of an amber color or an orange color here. If you use this on a DC power truck, you would get uh, a red on one side and a green on the other, uh, depending on the polarity, okay? So these are, a, a, it's a really nice little design that he's come up with. So you can use these as a portable uh, track power indicator all over your layout here. Uh, just move it around. Or if you want, you can take these and you can solder them underneath of your uh, rails um, say on a staging yard truck, and then you would know when your uh, staging yard truck has power or any other place on your layout for that matter. The one thing you have to be aware of is because they, you know, have an electrical circuit with resistance built in, they're not going to work with any type of, uh, of block occupancy detectors that uh, are depending on uh, resistance across the rails. Uh, for occupancy. So you can't use them with those. Uh, you can use them with an optical based system, just not one that's based on uh, uh, electrical resistance or a circuit across the rails. So those are a nice, neat little uh, uh, addition to his line. And uh, the, like I said, you can find these, uh, all of these products at uh, modeltech.uk. So that's his website. And there's a, he's already got a few places where you can order these online from uh, a few stockists or a few hobby shops over there. And also he has a, uh, a online sales set up as well. So you could go ahead and order directly from him. And, um, you know, assume something around 10 pounds, which is around $12 shipping uh, from the UK. So you're better off to purchase these in, in uh, quantities buy everything that you need at one time if you're going to ship it to the U.S. because it will cost you about $12 for shipping and handling from the U.K. So the more of this stuff you get, the better off you are. And he has other products on there. He has these. He has, of course, the, uh, the uh, rail aligners and a, a few other gadgets that you might want to take a look at as well while you're there. And like I said, he has lists uh, of other dealers that stock his products where you can buy them and you can buy additional supplies from them to make it more cost effective. But I mean, these things are so cool that uh, it's worth paying uh, more than the, for shipping than it costs for the product just to get your hands on these. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can install these here on the layout. Now, what I've done here is I'm going to show you how this comes apart. Now, first off, you have to realize that you have to remove three ties in order to make this work, okay? Because it has to have three tie spacing in order to fit to the end of the rail. It's all uh, designed to work with these Pico, uh, with this Pico uh, track. So, you know, all you have to do is cut out the uh, first three ties all the way back and remove the webbing in between uh, all the way, and then you can just, you know, install these in their place. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to cut through here and remove the webbing underneath of the rail three ties back. And I'm just going to cut through there, and then I'm going to go do it on the other side. I don't want to knock these loose and, and bust my rails, but you can just fit that under there and snip through the webbing here on these. And then you probably will need to cut through, depending on whether you're using a North American or UK prototype, the plastic rail spikes or the uh, chairs uh, that are cast in that hold 
these in place to the rails. So once you cut through these though, then you should be able to uh, slide it out of here. So I'm gonna cut through there a couple of times. I've already removed some of these to make it easier to do this, but I'm gonna make sure, okay? And then finally, the last thing you need to do, because I've already uh, put these in place and glued them down, I'm gonna have to slide this under here and cut through and get that adhesive released, okay? So I'm gonna run that all the way through. It's coming through now. Okay, good. And we'll do it on this side as well. Okay. Like that, okay. Now, that should slide out from under here fairly easily now. So let me give that a try. There, okay. So that one's free. Now let me go ahead and we'll do the same thing over here with this one. Go back three ties and then cut through the webbing, okay? Again, on this side, there. And then free up the rails from any spikes or other cast-in details that are meant to hold the, the rails in place. Like that, okay? And then we're gonna run the, uh, Oh, that came loose fairly quickly, didn't it? We'll slide that under there and break the bond with the adhesive, if it's already done, like so, okay? And then we should be able to slide this one out as well, okay? There it comes. So I'm just gonna pull that right out of there, okay? So now we've got that ready to go in place. Now. Before you do anything else, go ahead and sand up underneath of here to get any paint, because remember, I painted these. So I wanna make sure I can get a good, clean solder bond under here. So I'm gonna sand it just a little bit and get that cleaned up. Okay, there, that's good. Now, another thing I recommend you might do, take one of these square files like this and file the end of the tie here. Because you wanna make sure that those spacers on the uh, rail aligners can fit snugly in here. Now, this should just slide up under here, let's see. Okay, there it is. So you can see that's how it's gonna fit. Let me put both of them together and slide them in place. Here it is. Okay, here we go. So we can slide that in place here, just like this. And once we solder these to the, uh, to the rails, then it's gonna be good to go. Let me go ahead and uh, I need to tighten up this connection here. I took the, the, uh, I took the, the carriage bolts out. So I need to tighten that back up now that I've got this in here and we can go ahead and proceed to solder these down. Okay, I zoomed in just a little bit more to give you a closer look at what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the rail aligner and I'm gonna put a little bit of paste flux here on the tracing or on the circuit trace that goes underneath of the uh, rails. Okay, and then I'm gonna up Got to do both of these at the same time. Okay. okay, that's got those prepared. So now I'm going to put them here and join them together so that they're ready to go into position here because you want these in final alignment when you slide them in place here like this, okay? Because you're gonna want a nice tight fit. Okay, now I'm gonna take a piece of white styrene and make sure that they are lined up to match the other ties here, okay? Okay, so they're ready. 
And now I've got my soldering iron all ready and all heated up. So what I'm going to do is take my solder and I'm going to put the solder on the outside here. So we're going to put a little drop right here. I just remembered I wanted to add my heat sinks here to protect the plastic. There we go. Now that one should be tacked in place. So I can get this solder to flow up underneath of it. Now if you view the instructions on the uh, Model Tech website, he suggests using uh, some uh, solder paste on the top of the circuit traces. Okay, we've got it in there, got it in there, and we've got it in there. Now, let me go ahead and do the other side. I'm going to check these again, yep. You can see it flow through underneath of the uh, of the rails. Okay, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, so that one's done. So I can pull that out of there, and that's good and solid. That one's not going anywhere, to say the least. Okay, now let's go ahead and work on the ties on this side. Now make sure that your, right, your rails are totally aligned at this point because once we get these in place, they're not going to be moving anywhere. Now we'll come down the other side. There it came through. There. And finally this one. Okay, I think that's got it. So now I can take these off, set them aside. And now as you can see, those are not gonna go anywhere at all. Okay, so let me go ahead and we'll pull this apart and slide it together and I'll show you how they mesh. Okay, I've got the uh, I've got the carriage bolts uh, unlocked now. So let me just slide these apart a little bit. And you can see how they are very unobtrusive there on the ends. And once these are painted and ballasted, they're gonna blend in completely with the rest of the truck here. So you won't even notice them. Now, let me slide these back together and we'll see how they mesh up. So you can see they pull together perfectly there, except that I don't have the carriage bolts uh, uh, clamped down tight. I'm going to go ahead and clamp this one down and we will 
take a look at how that comes together there. Okay, so we've got these finished. It really is uh, a nice job here, a nice fit. And as you can see, they made it up perfectly when I joined them back together. Now, one thing I'm going to need to do here is, uh, I think I'll just squeeze in some uh, super glue uh, underneath of these rails, or underneath of these ties to hold them in place. And that'll stabilize those until I do ballast. And then when I put the ballast glue down, that's really gonna lock, uh, lock these in place. Now, one thing you might consider doing, uh, unlike me, I got ahead of myself on this, is just spread a little bit of adhesive on the bottom of the uh, rail aligners before you slide them in place here. Now, of course, if you're uh, building a new layout and just uh, installing these, and installing your track, you'll be able to glue everything down as you go along. So it'll be a fairly easy uh, procedure. Okay, another couple of things, let me point out while I'm, while I'm here. If you look real close, you can see that in these rail aligners, we have these two little holes right here uh, with their um, uh, gold-plated nickel contacts built in. Now these are for feeders. If you want to power your rails uh, uh, using this approach, uh, these connect to these traces and, of course, to your rails once they're soldered. So you can put your feeders up through here and then solder them in place and you'll have power to your rails through their connections here. Uh, another thing, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but right here in the middle of each one of these small uh, ties, there is a small hole where you can install a, uh, a, a nail or track nail. So if you like to nail your uh, ties and track down, uh, he's provided for that as well here on these. So uh, I think he thought that of just about everything. I, I can't think of anything else that I would uh, add to these. I think he's done just a brilliant job of designing uh, a lot of different uh, conveniences into these. I mean, uh, rail feeders here, you know, you can't beat that. And also your, uh, your nail holes, so you don't have to drill holes for your track nails as well. So uh, take a look at these uh, on the website, uh, modeltech.uk. Uh, and you know, it's a very, very nicely detailed website. It gives you all of the different uh, 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 versions of these, the O gauge, the narrow gauge, the standard gauge, and now the North American uh, Code 83 uh, Pico uh, Streamline uh, uh, flex track is available as well. So you've got all of these plus plus the ProTrack power indicators that I showed you earlier and uh, a couple of other things that he's added uh, to his line lately. Well, that's a wrap for today. I hope I've given you some ideas on how you can use these ProTrack rail aligners on your model railroad. And like I said, I'll be doing a follow-up video showing how you can use these uh, to protect your rails and align your rails on lift out sections on more permanent layouts like here on the Piedmont Southern why where you know I have at least two places where I can use these and we'll be showing you how I'm going to do that uh, in an upcoming video next week probably so that's it for today um, I will not be doing or releasing a new video on Friday Christmas Day instead I'll wait till Saturday or Sunday so enjoy your Christmas and look for the video um, a day or two later uh, uh, once you've had a chance to uh, play with all your other new toys so take it easy have a great Christmas and we'll see you here next weekend sometime bye now